Welcome to this free video sponsored by GetExcelTraining.com. I'm Ken Walker, and today we're going to take a look at the match function. What the match function does is allow us to find data inside of an array and locate the relative row uh, number of that data. For example, let's say we've got an array of, you know, a thousand different values and uh, we want to find out, you know, what is in that array, what position is the data at? Because the data could be, uh, you know, anywhere in our spreadsheet. For example, if the row of data or if the array of data is here, uh, we can't just go by row number because, you know, it, it could be it's jogged down here a little bit. This isn't actually the array of data that we're looking for. So it's a relative position in there. And I'll, I'll explain how that works and it'll kind of come together here in a little bit. But we've got, here's the format or the syntax of the match function. Match, parenthesis, and then the value. This is the value that you're looking for. This can be a number and it can be string text as well. Then we have the array. The array is what area of data, you know, what collection of data are we looking through. If I was to specify B2 to B86, okay? If I was to specify that as my range of data, that is, in fact, an array. And that's the area that I want the match function to look in. Then we have match type. There are three types. The first one is the default. This is a type of one. This will find the largest value that is less than or equal to the value that we have specified here. So let's say that we have specified 10,000 as a value, but in the array there is no 10,000. There's only a 999, okay, or a 9,999 rather. Well, if we have uh, type 1 or if we have no type specified, it will return to us the position of that 9,999 because there is no 10,000 in our array. So in that case, what we want to do is make sure that we sort the array in ascending order and then find our information. The next match type is zero. What this will do is find the first equal value, okay, exact, basically exactly what we have specified. So if we do a search for 10,000 and there is no 10,000, it's going to give us NA, not applicable, not available. It's not there. And then we have negative 1 or minus 1. This kind of goes the other way with it. It finds the smallest value that is greater than or equal to the actual value that we specified. So if we specified 10,000, but there is no 10,000, but there's an 11,000 and a 12,000, it's going to give us the position of the 11,000. And then if there is a 10,000, it's going to give us the position of that instead. Okay, so now let's see it in action here. I've got uh, a formula here, match, and I'm going L2, which is right here. Okay, I'm basically pulling that information. Whatever I type in there, I'm pulling it out. And then here's my array, A2 to A86, which is this arrangement of order numbers over here. And then my type is zero. Basically, I want to find only the exact thing that I'm looking for. So if I type in 6412 and hit enter, it gives me a seven. What that tells me is that from the top of my array, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see there the first occurrence of 64, uh, 6,412. If I do 6845, again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And you can see that's the number that it gave us here. Now, I mentioned that it also does text. So here, I've got a very similar formula. The only difference is we're looking at column B for the array of data. So let's do bullwhip. And you can see it gives me a 1. Why is that? Because that is the very first entry in the array that matches up with our criteria. If I do horse brush, 
gives me a three because one, two, three. There is horse brush. All right, so you basically see how it works pretty simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at some uh, different scenarios here with the match types, for example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to specify this range here, and I'm going to sort my data smallest to largest. And it's going to say, do you want to expand the selection? Because no doubt it sees that the data next to my selection is related. And yes, it is. So expand the selection. And it has now sorted the data in ascending order. And that's why 3512 is first. So let's look at creating now a, uh, a custom formula here. Equals match parenthesis. And then value, what are we looking for? Now what I'm going to do is show you how that um, it finds things before that are greater than and less than the actual value that you look for. Okay, But I'm going to do 6831 because there is one there, 6831. And I'm specifying A2 to A86. And we're going to do the exact value only. So 0 and then closing parenthesis. So it gives me a 17. Okay, because 6831 right there from the top of the array, it's 17 rows down to 6831. Okay, that's why we get that 17. Now, let's say that these weren't order numbers. They were just maybe quantities, for example. So I'm going to use a 1 as my match type. But I'm going to change my number here. Let's do 6840, because that's one that we know is not there in the list. And it still gives us a 17. Because remember, type 1 finds the largest value that's less than or equal to what we have specified. So let's check that out. We specified 6840, and here we've got 6831 and 6845. So 6831 is the largest value that is less than or equal to the number we specified. Now let's try it the other way, but this time what we're going to do is I'm going to select my data here, and we are going to sort largest to smallest, and yes, again, expand the selection for us here. And let's do negative 1. And you can see, whoa, 68 comes up. Because, remember, what we've specified here is 6840. So that means there is no 6840 here. But the next largest number is 6845, and that is 68 rows from the top of our array right here. Now I want to tell you about some wild cards that you can also use. This is pretty neat. Um, let's sort here ascending. And yes, you can expand the selection again. And uh, what we're going to do is actually, I can type this anywhere. It's kind of a brand new thing equals match, opening parentheses, and then the lookup value. If you're going to look up text, you're going to put it in double quotes. So like, for example, bullwhip, and then the array will be B2 to B86, and I want an exact match. And that gives me 13, because from here it's 13 rows down to the first occurrence of bullwhip. But Let's now say that we wanted, um, let me show you here. If some of these were 15, okay, these are different saddles. And some of them are maybe even 14. But I want to do a search through all of this data and find any occurrence of a saddle at all. What I'm going to specify here is black 
saddle, and then star, which is an asterisk. And what that'll do is that no matter what happens after that asterisk, you know, in that position right there, after saddle, it doesn't care what's there. So it can be anything, right? Like, um, let me show you a perfect example here. Saddle soap. Okay, so if I want anything that has to do with saddle, I can do just like that. Saddle star. And what it's pulling up here is the first occurrence uh, right here of saddle. So I'm not specified saddle blanket. I haven't specified saddle soap. Just anything that has saddle in it with anything after that. And that's what that asterisk is for. So anything, actually I should correct myself, anything that starts with saddle that has that asterisk in it. Now another thing we can do is use a question mark to match individual characters. So let's just, uh, I'm going to rewrite some data here. Bull 123 whip. Bull 124 whip. So we got a bunch of different kinds of bull whips there. Okay. Now watch this. What I can do is type bull and then for every character that I don't care what it is, I put a question mark. So one, two, three, and then whip. So what it's doing is it's going through there and using this as a template. Anything that has bull, it starts with bull, and then any three characters, I don't care, and then ends with whip. Anything that matches that criteria is going to come up for us. We can also do the same thing with a star. So see I get the same number there. I can actually do bull, star, and whip. This is kind of opening things up, but that's basically the way that it works. Is anything that starts with bull, I don't care what's in between, any number of characters in between, and ends with whip. So that'll find, you know, quite a lot of stuff for us. Okay, so that's how that works. Those are the uh, wildcard parameters that you can use. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope that explains for you how the match function works. And be sure to visit our website at getexceltraining.com for even more videos. I'm Ken Walker. See you next time.